guys, welcome back to Shane Complains. Um, it's um, it's been kind of it's actually not, not that long since I last recorded something, but um, I figure I'll record something now because some stuff's been going on, and it's kind of all connected. So anyway, um, re- on Sunday, I think it on yeah, it was Sunday that um. One of the, um, my, uh, I don't know if you guys, uh, some of you listen to this, probably, uh, might not watch football, but a football player um, took it upon himself and said, hey, I'm going to pretty much wear what I want to wear. Um, I'm going to wear shoes that's not regulated or not uh, approved by the NFL and all this kind of stuff. Long story short, he ended up having to change the, sh- the sneakers or the shoe, the cleats that he was wearing. And, you know, now this is... Wednesday today, and they're still talking about that on the radio um, or on the TV or what have you. But anyway, so I only reason I bring that up because something like that actually happened at work. Um, now, if you guys don't know, I'm an assistant an assistant manager, and we're told, are we told, told our employees, you have to wear all black all black, if you have to wear a jacket, it has to be all black, you can't wear hats, you can't do anything like that, um, or any, any other color, you can wear shoes, could be any color that you want to do, um, but you have to wear all black, so anyway, long story short is, last month was October, and we said to them, hey, you know, you guys can wear pink, can't wear pink shirts, can't wear pink pants, or anything like that, which you could wear um, like a pink hat or uh, pink sneakers. I mean, you can do that anytime, but you, you know, pink accessories, you know. So people came in, you know, did their thing. October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. They did what they had to do, whatever. Great. Now, this girl on Tuesday came, came to work in the morning in a black and pink jacket I waited for her to finish with her client I went up to her and said hey you can't wear that and then immediately she said oh so breast cancer awareness and I, I looked at her like real quick and then she okay I'll change it I'll change it because last time I checked breast cancer awareness is only in October so anyway later that day she came back in to work with a pink hat on so, it was just like, at a point where, to me, got, like, disrespectful. Disrespectful. So, mind you, to me, it's disrespectful because, um, Breast Cancer Awareness, Breast Cancer Awareness Month is over. Actually, let me tell you what, let me, actually, she came in, and I eventually approached her, said, hey, you cannot wear that hat. I just said the hat. And all of a sudden, she says... You can't, I can um, I'm wearing it because of breast cancer. Breast cancer awareness. I looked at her and said, no, you can't wear that hat. Now, like I said, like I was saying before, it's like, I kind of feel like a disrespect because you're using that as an excuse to not wear appropriate attire, not wear appropriate uniform. Because it's November. Uh, yesterday was November 5th. It's, no, it, it's, a, it's November. What this month apparently is no shave November, whatever it is. I don't know what month it is, what what you know special month it is when it comes to November. But it's November. It's not October. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So it's just it, it was just like I looked at her like she's crazy, and then she went she stormed off, upset. And that's, and that's why I always find it funny when people do something wrong. Especially these younger kids, and I'm, I'm, mind you, I'm, I'm about to be 34. I'm not, I, I'm not that old myself. But it's like, you get upset. Like I did something wrong. Oh, I broke the rules. But you know the rules. You know what, what you're supposed to wear. I cannot wear. So why are you getting upset? So anyway, she walked off, and eventually we have like this group message system. So I had to put in a group message that hey guys. Just to let you know that the people that don't know, breast cancer awareness is in October. It's only in one month, and that's October. That's what I put in the group chat. 
you know, one of one of the um one of um the employees said, Shane, you be, he was laughing, Shane, you're being really petty right now. I said, yeah, because honestly, to me, it's disrespect. You are doing something that you're not supposed to do, and you go say it's for breast cancer awareness. What the hell are you talking about? Because mind you, I don't know if I said this to anybody or if anybody heard me, but the fact of the matter is, my mom's is almost a 19-year breast cancer survivor. So for you to do something like say something like that, it really irritates me. That that happened. But I made sure last night I didn't say you couldn't wear pink anymore. I said you could not wear a hat. So this morning she comes in and she decides to wear a black hat. Wear a black hat. So I let her finish what she was doing. Eventually she was walking out and I called her over. I, I said I, I wrote the I pretty much wrote her up. Um, it's not a written written warning or anything like that. It's actually a write-up. So I wrote her up. And the first thing out of her mouth, after signing it, well, while signing it, she says, I hope that you, you're going to um, write up, you're going to write up so-and-so too, because she wears hats all the time too. I mean, mind you, I've been, I know who she's talking about, and I did speak to her months ago about it. That's one. And two... You're going to do something like that, you get in trouble, so you're going to try to pull somebody underneath the bus with you. I, I never respect stuff like that. I never, ever respect stuff like that. And I never, ever will. And what kind of, what kind of, what's kind of funny, because our manager was making fun of me, saying that was my hire, but it, I, just, I just take it as a learning experience. When you hear people talk in an interview, they come in, they're excited, you know, they have the resume, either it's glowing or it's not, whatever. They're going to talk themselves up. Oh, I'm an amazing person. I can do this. You ask them their questions. They they have, they gave you the answers that you want to hear because they know what you want to hear. But then when it comes down to it, not that they're not the complete opposite of what they say, but they could be, but they may lack these certain qualities that, that you need to have a good employee. And these are the kind of stuff that I'm learning. My more recent hire that I, you know, I interviewed and hired, um, he's doing fantastic. He's absolutely doing fantastic. I told him you have to be hungry to, to survive in this job. He's hungry. He's almost on his, pretty much on his second month now, and he's really, really doing a fantastic job. You know, and it sucks, though, because this woman is doing so well. She's doing her job really, really well when it comes to, like, you know, the money part or whatever. I don't even want to get into details, but when she's actually doing other things, she's doing really well. But the lack of respect and being insubordinate is just, it's just very, it's not really good. It's not really, and the funny part is she's actually tried to get more responsibilities to do something else. But you can't even do your job you're supposed to do now. We're going to ask for more responsibilities. It doesn't even make sense. That doesn't make sense to me. And I kind of said that to her, but in a way, so it wasn't offensive or whatever. Because God knows a lot of sensitive people out there now. You know, but it's it's just weird. Like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Like, And she then, well, after I wrote her up, she came back in. She had the black hat on. She had the black hat on. And I thought to myself, maybe she didn't understand what she was signing a paper for. But I, I remembered she saying that you better write somebody else up because she wears hats too. So you knew what you why you were writing getting written up. You knew. But yet you're gonna go bring come back in with that. So I just told my man to hey, you handle this. Because I'm about to write her up again. And if I'm not mistaken, she's about to get a third corrected. Once you get three, you get fired. Or you're on grounds to get fired, I should say. It, 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 to me, it makes no sense. And I hear all these stories of people saying, oh man, I need money to do this. I want to do this. Like, you tell me your goals. You tell me what you want to do. But it's all fucking talk. When you see these people, when it comes time to do the job and follow the rules, these are the rules that were set not by me, not by my, not by the, the general manager, but by the company. 
but by the by the district manager. End of story. We follow the rules. We do what's supposed to do. We make the company a lot of money. We so in turn make us money. That's it. End of story. And it's like these. I don't want to keep saying kids because it doesn't fall on just the kids and the millennials and all kind of stuff. But it it it, it just. I don't get it. I just don't get it. They talk all this stuff. I'm talking about anybody in particular, like generation-wise. But when people come in for interviews, they talk all this stuff. And then when it comes time to show up and show out, it's just like, uh, you know, whatever. And I think she, I, I think, I feel like she made some some um, big sales or what have you. So she's above the rules now. She's above the rules. And mind you, she been with us. She been with this company before, and then came back. But she been with this company, been back with us for maybe I want to say about six or seven months or so. And, and it's that she was on a verge to get fired anyway because she wasn't doing that well. Until she finally saw hanging out with somebody, you know, doing whatever they do on the side. I don't really don't care. But he pretty much helped. I'm saying he helped her. You know, but I guess they they're spanning together, and ever since then they've been she's been very successful. But either way, it's just like I don't like I don't understand I don't understand what's like what it's so hard to to interview people and actually take people's word for stuff word for it whatever they you know say. Don't come into an interview and lie and say you're gonna do this and say do that and that's not that's not who you are. And you have to try to impress people and all kind of stuff. But to me, it doesn't make any sense because eventually you're going to have to deliver what you promise. You have to deliver what you promise. Oh, my God. It's... And I'm not, I'm not angry so much anymore about it. But I'm just puzzled. I'm more puzzled than anything. Like, why do you have to do something like that? Why can't you just listen to the rules? We're not asking you to do anything crazy. I don't think we are. Just wear all black. I mean, wearing all black, it makes people look slimming anyway. You know, majority of the time, people look good, good in black. You can't wear a hat. You know, not, not like she's balding or something. She, you know, her hair is fine. You know, and, and it's just where, you know, another thing, don't show your belly button off. I mean, don't lift, you know, don't have your shirt all the way up to your stomach. So your stomach is showing. I don't know, it's just like, respect your job and respect yourself. I, I mean, am I wrong? Am I wrong in saying what I am? I know how, you know, we have to be, you know, more understanding and all that kind of stuff, but we're, we're trying to, we're representing a business. You know, we have to be professional. You know, we have to look professional. And it's it's just it's just weird to me. I mean, I t- I tell people this all the time. I tell I tell employees this all the time. Just focus on building your resume, doing what you have to do, working hard, making your money. Just focus on making your money. If it's hurting your money, or whatever the company decides to do, then complain, then get upset, then quit. It's up to you. But just do your job. If something that the company is having you doing is not hurting your money, what's the big deal? Focus on your money. Focus on building your resume. Because most of these, most of these, most of these people here, most of these uh, uh, where I work, you know, let's be realistic. They're not gonna be here forever. Not because they're gonna get fired, but some people want to be able to do. Gonna probably get burnt out and want to do other things. Now some people just can't really survive and do the job the right way and are driven enough but just focus on building your resume focus on making your money I mean and that's all I'm trying to do that's all I'm trying to do so it, it just doesn't make sense to me and these kids are young I mean was I like that when I was young no I wasn't to that certain extent but I wasn't really listening to 100% like what my mom said 100% what my um, what any other adult says, my, my previous bosses said, or whatever. I never really, honestly, listened to hundred percent. But I did listen to you know certain extent. I you know whatever. Like I might as well shrug, shrug it off or whatever, and um, handle the consequences when or whatever. 
when it happens. But it's like, I'm not even that much older than her. So, I mean, I'm in her, I guess, I uh, not, 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 you know, generation. I, maybe, I guess. But I'm trying to help you. And I tell you guys, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to absolutely positively help you. But if I see that I can't help you, I won't care. If see that you don't care, I'm not going to care. End of story. The whole idea about leading a horse to water, you can't force them to drink. You can't. Just make sure you, and, and, and it's also something I say, is make sure that when you have a, you're in a relationship with somebody, doesn't matter it's plutonic, um, sexual, or um, professional, you have to make sure that you give 100%, 110% in that relationship. Make sure you give 110%. So if the if the relationship goes sour, you have to fire them, you have to break up with them, you can't be friends with them anymore, or whatever, whatever. You know, at the end of the day, you're not going to get upset about it. You're not going to, you're not going to feel guilty, feel bad or whatever. Because you know, at the end of the day, hey, I tried my best. I did what I had to do to make the relationship work and didn't work. And like I said, that goes for, um, between employee, boss, between two, two employees or whatever the case may be, any kind of relationship, you make sure that you do your best in that relationship. Before you, have to, before you have to cut ties. And that's what I always try to do. That's what I always tell them. I'm going to try my best to help you out. And I'm trying my best to guide you. And be able to learn from the mistakes I made. I didn't make that much mistakes. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not being big headed. But. I'm trying to help you. All the little mistakes that I made. I, I tell that to my step, my stepsons too. I want you guys to be the better version. The be, better versions of me your mom and your dad I want you to be better than us because that's what that's what my mom pretty much wanted me my mom came from Jamaica brought us up here the str- you know struggles to survive all kind of stuff that the normal this is the regular not a regular story but the, you know story you probably heard many many times of struggling and living in one bedroom with five people all kind of stuff and we worked our way to the top or not to the top top in my eyes top you know for me to be able to achieve the American dream buying my own house, you know, doing that whole stuff, you know, and I'm trying my best to make sure that my wife's kids understand the struggle of everything, it's not going to come easy, and you have to work hard, and that's the same thing I tell the trainers, same thing I tell the trainers, I'm not saying not to be loyal to a company, I'm not saying that, but they, you have to understand, if the company is not yours, your name is not on it, You have to make sure you have a backup plan. You have to make sure that you have a backup plan. Because any day you can walk in, people get laid off. Any day you can walk in, you can do one slip up, one little thing. It blows up to it blows up to something so big, and then you lose your job. And I mean, I don't know what this guy's intention. This is an example. I don't know what the guy's intention was, but in my eyes, from what I heard. It didn't seem like it was that mu- that big of a deal. So this one guy, um, he decides to, um, he's on a, a work trip with some female employees. So he decides to, um, he I think he was uh, he's about to go up to his um to his room or something like that, and he pretty much said, hey. Come up to our room, and I have a, I have some papers that we can, you know, whatever, that I have to give to you. And the fact that he said to go up to my room, the fact that he said that, he got fired for that. The fact that he said that she felt uncomfortable and all this stuff. I mean, I'm not, I'm, is a woman wrong? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying the woman's wrong. I'm not saying all that stuff. But because he said that phrase to her about going up to his room. To, even as to get a piece of paper, whatever it might be, professional. Even to get a piece of paper, he got in trouble for that, and he got fired for that. You never know. You absolutely, you never know. And you know some things that I learned from when I was in school. If you're a male and you're about to discipline a female, make sure it's in an open area, and or a female is in the room with you. A female, not a male. 
um, is in a room with you. You know, that's a little tidbit from there. But either way, if the if if the company is not on un- is not um, under your name or whatever, you don't own the company or whatever, you have to be ready. You have to have a backup plan. You know, or not even have a backup plan per se, but have your resume updated frequently as possible to be able to move on to something else. And that's what I tell the trainers because you never know. I'm doing very well for myself. I'm happy where I'm at. I am. I'm very content. But I, I'm realistic to know that you never. I've been actually. I made eight years with this company. Um, actually, two days, a couple days, two days ago. November. Uh, actually, November second. Sorry, November second. I made um, eight years with this company. I can be very loyal to a company. I'm very loyal to anybody if you're loyal to me. But you have to be realistic that anything can happen. So have your resume updated. Actually, I think it's been three months. I think I need to update mine. But have your resume updated and be ready. So God forbid something happens. You're let go today. By the end of the day, you're already applying. Your resume is already sent out already. Your resume is already sent out already. You have other things lined up. And that's what and as I tell them, that's what I'm doing. I want to make sure I keep on hustling, keep on building my resume so I can get a job any and anywhere. Anywhere. I mean, honestly, will it be in the um, same field as I'm in now? I don't know, to be honest with you. But I can get a job anywhere. And that's why, honestly, I keep saying I want that manager title above my name. I mean, if I get general manager, that's be open. That'll open a whole lot more doors. A whole lot more doors. But once I get that manager title on my name, doors will be opening. I mean, are doors opening now? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, if I tried, I think doors will be doors are open for me. But I have goals in mind. I have things I want to do. I said to myself a few months, a few years, actually, few years ago, it was actually almost eight, maybe seven years ago when I actually decided. I said that I want to run this place. I want to run this building. Uh, meaning, I want to be a general manager of this place. You know, and it's, it's going to take away from what, stuff that I love to do in this place. But um, I will handle more of the big picture things and what's going on. Um, you know overall you know so either way that's all I'm trying to say to people right now I'll say to you guys right now make sure that you have a backup plan and if your boss is telling you to do something that is not hurting your money and to a certain extent if they actually do some crazy stuff you know of course don't do it and follow a complaint whatever but I'm talking about like certain uniform certain things you have to do be uh, being on time being on time is something you have to do. It doesn't matter what job you work at. But it's if a, if a bo- your boss is asking you to do something in reason, and if you step back and oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. I should supposed to be on time. I'm supposed to have proper uniform on. Do it. Don't complain. Don't give him attitude. The thing I feel like I could I could have been an absolute dick, and the first time she or he you decide to not follow the rules I could write them up and get them out even sooner but I've been giving them so many chances and I think that's what that's what I, I failed as a manager I, I really have to call, hold people accountable and that's what Gary V said when handling with the, with the millennials or anybody really in my opinion you have to hold people accountable try to be understanding but hold people accountable you have to hold them accountable it doesn't matter what generation they're from or whatever. All that kind of stuff. Millennial, sensitive people, whatever kind of crap. You have to hold them accountable. And explain to them. Let them know. Hey, I'm holding you accountable. I'm, I'm, I'm holding you accountable because I told you to do something and you didn't do it. It's only fair that I reprimand you, that I fire you, that I do, write you up or whatever the case may be. It's only fair. Because you, you're not reaching my expectations. And... It, I don't know, it's, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong about what I'm saying, you know, let me know if I'm wrong, I don't think I'm wrong, I tell my wife all the time, I'm right 99.99% of the time, and the reason why I say that, because I try my best to be open-minded to to what people say, and how people feel, and all kinds of stuff, I try to be open-minded, I try to understand 
why people say certain, th- certain things and why people do certain things. And sometimes it's hard to understand why people do stupid ass shit. And that's why I, I was talking to my clients about this. I'll tell them, age, I mean, people's bullshit or bullshit answers, there's no age limit. When a 10 year old tells you something that's absolutely stupid, and a stupid reason for doing something, or somebody's 24, 25 years old. It's both the same thing. Are you serious? Like, like I look at them. I try my best to, like, to calm myself down and not like, like curse them out or say anything crazy. But when they say something, I look at them. Like, are you stupid? That's your reasoning behind doing this. But I have to. I, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't um, let my emotions get the best of me. You know, when it comes to dealing with the person. I do let my emotions get the best of me when I explain, I talk to another manager about it or just talk to somebody else about it, I talk to my wife about it, you know, I like kind of let it all out, what I wanted to say to them or how I wanted to say it and that helps me a lot, you know, but I try my best not to get angry, get upset towards them because if I say something, I start going, I can like really get hurtful and all kind of stuff. You know, um, I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. And if you're a boss, please heed my warnings on the thing I said. If you're an employee, please heed my warnings what I'm trying to say. You know, just focus on building your resume. Focus on building yourself up. Focus on building a future for yourself. If you don't, definitely if you don't see yourself with this company or in the same field, Build your resume up. Work as hard as you can to build a good life for yourself and your family or whoever else, whatever the case may be. Just focus on yourself. All right? And building yourself up. All right? And you should be fine. You shouldn't be um, having any issues or whatever with your future. And what's funny is right now I'm in my car. I drove here talking to you guys right now. And the funny thing is the girl that just pretty much his videos um, just drove by with her with her boo or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what they are, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. But it just drove by. I don't know they definitely saw me. But I just find that that's, that's kind of funny. But anyway, um, I hope, like I said, I hope you guys keep my warning, understand what I'm saying. Um, feel free to ask me any questions. You can find me on Twitter at Kendapa, my last name, um, on Twitter. That's at C-O-N-D-A-P-P-A. Um, ask me any questions you guys might have. Thanks for those that are listening. I really appreciate it. I'm definitely going to keep on doing this. I feel like it's easier to just to talk on the way home from work or, you know, not really going to work. I'm actually going back to work. But um, I feel like I might do more of my little rants or whatever you want to call it on the way home. Because usually I have a lot to say on the way home. You know, um, but anyway, thanks again for listening, guys. I hope you guys are all having a good day. Like I always say, um, think positive things and positive things will happen. Just keep your head up and keep driving forward, okay, guys? All right, have a good one.